Although he had appeared as a man in centuries past, it was a real human being who was born into the world on that long ago night in Bethlehem. He had come by way of a supernatural conception, but by a natural birth. With only brief flashes of Messiah's glory, he had lived the life of a commoner, raised in Nazareth and laboring with Joseph in the carpenter shop. Not until he was 30 years of age did it become increasingly evident that something special lay underneath the common exterior, so to speak. It was first in the little village of Cana that Jesus, quote, manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him, John 2, 11. They were to make, quote, curtains of goat's hair to be a tent over the tabernacle, Exodus 26, 7. Here, tent, Hebrew, ohel, is added to the word tabernacle, referring to the white linen sanctuary. It presents the common dwelling of a nomad pointing to the incarnation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. 2 Corinthians 5.19. John wrote, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.14. The word dwelt might be translated tabernacled. In the lands of the Bible, goat's hair is primarily black. Thus the words penned by Solomon, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. at Song of Solomon 1.5. The goat, of course, was vital to both the sin offering and the Day of Atonement. One traveler wrote of the Bedouin dwelling, their tents are made of goat hair and are very loosely woven. They're beautifully lit inside, and as the outside of the tent gets hot, it causes an updraft that sucks air through the loose weave. If you open the tent flaps, the air comes screaming in, even though there is no breeze. It's brilliant. If it rains, the goat fibers swell up and the tent gets tight as a drum. And because it's black, the tent shows no dirt." End quote. As with the making of the linen curtains, so it was with these, quote, all the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom spun yarn of goat's hair, Exodus 35, 26. We can't help but think of all the wise women, quote, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem, Mark 15, 41. It was these women who were last at the cross and first at the tomb, whose hearts stirred with the greatest wisdom of all. There were not 10, but 11 curtains this time, with the 11th folded over at the front edge, the only one seen by Israel. It has been pointed out that one eleventh is the same proportion as the three years out of 33 that the nation saw of the life of Christ. Each piece was 30 cubits long and four cubits wide, again united by clasps or rings, but this time made of bronze, not gold, making the whole tent 30 by 44 cubits. Unlike the Mishkan, which stopped a cubit short of the ground on each side, this tent touched the earth. Note the distinction made between the two sets of curtains when the glory cloud entered the structure. Quote, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, the goat's hair, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That's the white linen. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, that's the goat hair, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That's the white linen again. Exodus 40, verses 34 and 35. How reminiscent of the transfiguration, cloud cover and all. Peter with amazement writes, 
he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 2 Peter 1.17 